Hi, Linda Riche from Robert Riche Jewelers in Dorval, and I'm back for part two of the latest in diamond engagement ring trends. In my last video, I covered the oval and the pear-shaped diamonds. If you didn't see that video, I will link it at the end of this one. The elongated diamond shapes have been particularly popular in the last couple of years, and so I wanted to make sure you had pertinent information on each of these fancy cut diamonds. So today, to round out the elongated diamond shapes, I will be covering the Marquise cut diamonds, as well as the two step cuts, which are the emerald cut and the baguette. So let's start with the Marquise cut, which I find has the most romantic story. This cut comes straight from the French royal courts. Legend has it that Louis XV commissioned a jeweler to create and design a diamond shape that would resemble the lips of the Marquise de Pompadour. The Marquise de Pompadour was his chief mistress, and he thought she had the most perfect lips he had ever seen. Isn't that the most romantic story? I just love this. So this cut also has 58 facets, just like the round brilliant, the pear, and the oval-shaped diamonds. And thanks to its elongated, narrow shape, it can give it the illusion of greater size. Do play it safe if you select a Marquise cut diamond by protecting its two end points. We all know how hard diamonds are, but it doesn't make them exempt to chipping, especially those delicate points. So it can be bezel set for worry-free. Most of them are set in a prong setting. Look for a V-prong to cover the tips to best protect against damage. A very elegant cut. It is for the woman who has a larger-than-life personality and a love for everything glamorous. Some people believe its elongated shape represents the soul's journey through life. The pointed ends symbolizing its beginning and end. One of the most expensive celebrity engagement diamond rings of all times belonged to Jackie Kennedy. In 1968, Aristotle Onassis proposed to her with a 40.24 carat flawless Marquise cut diamond ring. She actually only wore it twice after it was put in the bank's vault until she passed. It was then sold at auction in 1996 for 1.96 million pounds. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would like to be able to wear and enjoy my ring every day. But I guess a ring worth that much money can be nerve-wracking having that on your finger. They say bigger is better, but I think in this case, being more demure would not be a bad thing. Victoria Beckham also has a Marquise engagement ring, one of 14 engagement rings that David Beckham has given her. Ashley Simpson has a Marquise engagement ring. It is set in platinum and yellow gold with ruby accents, and it has a very vintage look to it. What I like most about the Marquise cut is its versatility. When you set it sideways in a very minimalist setting, it has a very sleek, modern look, but you can uh, set it to make it look very vintage. So it's very versatile in that way. And now for the emerald cut, a very sophisticated, understated, and elegant diamond cut. The emerald cut diamond is a very old diamond cut. It did get its name in 1920s with a sharp rise in its popularity. This era was marked by the Art Deco movement. With its clean lines, symmetry, and geometric forms in all areas of life, in architecture, fashion, and jewelry. Surprisingly enough, it too has 57 facets, like the round brilliant, but the way the facets are laid out gives it a totally different look. It's a crisp, clean look. Rather than sparkle, the emerald cut diamond, with its elongated step cut facets, gives it a subdued hall of mirror effect. While most emerald cut diamonds are rectangular, they can also be square shaped and both shapes have cut corners for extra durability. Just like the pear or the marquise, those corners are best protected by a prong or bezel set. The flat surface of the stone, as well as the parallel step cuts, make the inclusions easier to spot. So you may end up paying a bit more because of the need for a higher clarity. The same applies for its color. 
It will show up more because of the large table. The table is the top facet. And so color will be more easily noticeable to the naked eye. The open style of this diamond cut symbolizes an open heart and personal clarity. Wearers have a strong sense of style that is matched by their self-worth and assurance. Beyonce, Paris Hilton, Grace Kelly, Anne Hathaway, Amal Clooney are all celebrities that enjoy their emerald cut engagement rings. Beyonce's stunning ring is said to be 24 carat in size and flawless. Absolutely stunning and worth millions. And now for the baguette cut diamond, the last of the elongated diamond cuts. The word baguette is of French origin, meaning a long thin loaf of French bread. The difference between the baguette cut and the emerald cut diamonds is that the baguette has only 14 facets and it has pointed corners. As for the emerald cut, it has 58 facets and cut corners. Like the emerald cut diamond, the baguette is a step cut that doesn't have as much sparkle as other diamond cuts, but it does have elegance and sophistication. It offers unique beauty with its modern yet classic look. Originally, the baguette cut diamond was used as a side stone in combination with other diamond shapes. However, its timeless appeal has allowed it to evolve into a standalone choice for engagement and wedding rings. It was created in the 20s, 1920s, 1930s. This style of cut was born out of its functionality. It emerged into the jewelry scene during the Art Deco and Art Nouveau period. The wearer of a baguette ring is said to receive energy and light from them, and in doing so, assisting them in reaching their desires and goals. Additionally, the long rectangular shape of the baguette cut diamond is said to signify stability and strength, making them a popular choice for engagement rings and bridal jewelry. For any diamonds, there are a lot of factors influencing its beauty. You've all heard of the four C's, cut, clarity, color, and carrot. Two stones that have the exact same classification on paper can look very different. And so that's why I always recommend that you choose your jeweler before you choose your diamond. Let him, the professional, select stones for you to look at so that you get the most bang for your buck. So which is your favorite? Have I helped you zero in on your choice if you're looking to sparkle up your life? Let me know. And I have linked the video for the first part, which was on ovals as well as pear shapes. Sparkle on!